Isn't that Rovada still clutches over at the bar? He's been drinking all day. I heard that Rovad got himself a nickname, and it's not a good one. Very embarrassing. You know, I can clearly hear both of you. Now you just shut up and mind your own business. Bunch of nosy bastards. Why did it have to happen to me? I'll never hear the end of it. Hello YouTube, and welcome back once again to Fortress Zaludadil. I just noticed that the Axe Mother is throwing a tantrum caused by a ghost. Son of an ass. That's actually not great, YouTube. Where the hell is she? Oh, Dathan. Where you be, Dathan? Alright, here she is. I threw something. I'm so regretful. You better be. She didn't hurt anybody, thankfully. It looks like she just threw a rock down in the mines. Well, no biggie. Crisis averted. Good. Good. Okay, anyways, on the subject of tantrum-causing ghosts, we do have a ton of ghosts on the map right now. Uh, most of which are Osprey people. One, two, three, four, five Osprey people ghosts, uh, as well as a traitor and two babies. Those are the three who perished while making the tombs last episode. And I suppose we'll have to continue work on that. We'll get those tombs out of the way. We'll polish up the arena quite a bit. We have to make their way to throw goblins into the arena. And we also have to make a way for my warriors to safely get into the arena. So hopefully we'll be doing both of those. And on top of that, we really have to start producing something to trade with those merchants because I really want to get that queen here. And I mean, like, we really have to get going on that too, because if you remember, I said at the beginning of this series that it's going to be a very short series, maybe four or five episodes. And hey, breaking news, fourth episode right here. But I guess we'll have to play that by ear. I mean, this fortress has gotten pretty big and fairly interesting anyways. As long as we get some conflict at some point, then we can continue it. It seems like a shame to retire it so early. I mean, obviously, we've only just gotten started here. I made a military last episode, a big old arena. We haven't even thrown any goblins in there yet. I'm certainly not going to retire this place before we get attacked by goblins, at least once. But uh, anyways, I got off on a tangent right there. Tomb, arena, make some stuff to trade. Let's get to it. First of all, I believe we should make some stuff to trade with merchants. And what the hell? You know what we actually have a lot of here at Zuludadil? Wood. So we're gonna make some wooden figurines. I'll make 100 of them, okay? And those figurines will be related to a historical figure. Figurines of Bim Silversnarl, the Rapid Violator of Shadows. I figure after our last series there, most people in this world have to be familiar with Bim. So maybe these dwarves here are gonna take advantage of that, maybe make some, some merchandise related to Bim. So we'll make 100 wooden figurines of Bim Silversnarl. And what the hell, we'll make some more too. We'll make 50 of Monarch Butterfly Men, and we'll also make 50 more, a pine tree. That's pretty boring though, gotta put something else on there. And a dwarf, and the dwarf is striking down the pine. I guess probably with an axe, but maybe his fist since it's not specified. And you know what, I'll make 100 more of just random figurines. I'll leave it up to the artist. I kinda like that, setting up our little production queue here. It's moderately entertaining. That's our first batch. It's series one of the Zaludadil figurines, first edition. All right, but uh, tomb, tomb, okay, let's see. Tomb goes down and we hit the stone here. And I guess I lied about plucking that dwarf carcass out of this water because I never ended up doing that, but that's absolutely fine. We'll get that taken care of one way or the other. First of all, we'll carve down into this stone here, just a little bit. And while the dwarves are doing that, I believe I'm going to try to make a way for the warriors to get into the arena. All right, and we have this little spot right up here. I think I'll just carve out this wall right here, then make a staircase down underground so that my warriors can use a tunnel to get into the arena, while the goblins are thrown from above off a big old tower. A tower that will lead out from the prison, I think. Alrighty, now this tunnel is down in the tombs. I guess I should make it pretty glorious, seeing as how the dwarves that live here don't get a nice underground fortress like the typical dwarf in this world. The least I could do is make sure that their final rest is nice and glorious in a big old carved cavern sort of an area but how to do this um all right we'll start off with a shape like this that should give us more than enough room hopefully for all the corpses that shall be interred here in the future although you know i think i said something very similar in my last fortress oh well all right dwarves are already hard at work carving out the tombs let's take a look up here at the walkway for the warriors coming right along as well and we can continue that down just like this there we are i think that should do the trick now the warriors have a way to appear at the back of the arena seemingly mysteriously it's gonna be awesome i can't wait till we get some goblins to throw in here that's for sure just be patient krug just be patient i guess i'll make like a little cabin sort of an area right up here for the warriors to appear from all right, that should do the trick for now. Carving out the warrior's tunnel, that should be done momentarily. We'll have to make sure to get that lined with some nice logs. Or perhaps stone, I guess we'll see. Probably logs. 
Gotta make sure to take care of all these tomb walls as we go. Don't want any colorful stones in there, it's gotta be gray. You know how it is. Then I think after these rooms are all carved out, I'm going to carve down farther and then make little pillars on which I'm going to put the burial receptacles or slabs. Maybe I'll put some water down underneath as well. Doran Kegethakut, the dwarven child, has withdrawn from society. Very cool. I can't remember the last time I had a child make an artifact. Yeah, I can't remember how long it's been exactly, but I know it's been some time. I've really only had it happen a couple of times, and I think the last one, you know, I don't even know if it happened in the layer shalit, really. They retain that skill throughout their entire life, and that's really a good thing, because through their entire adult life, if they do make it that far, they <laughs> A vile force of darkness has arrived. It's about damn time, I'll tell you. Alright, let's see what we're working with here. Actually, very surprisingly, they appeared in the top left of the map. Well, it gives us a lot more time to get my dwarves to safety. I knew I felt a special tingle in the beard. Okay, dwarves, first things first, I gotta make a nice burrow. That's gonna actually take a little bit of time, give me a second. Alright, that should about do it for the new burrow. It encompasses only the main fortress area, not the prison or the tomb or even the arena right now, because that's not completely blocked in yet. But now I just gotta call all my dwarves there and hopefully they listen to me. They should. They really should. Let's see, what do we have for invaders? Uh, not many at the moment, just seven. One of whom is a wrestler, which is kind of strange. All right, dwarves, you ready? Everyone to the burrow, let's go. Get moving. Do I have any dwarves who are way out there anywhere? I don't think so. I shouldn't anyways. I think we're gonna be good. A bunch more goblins have appeared. It looks like they're still coming too. Although there aren't many of them. This one here actually appears to be wounded, which is strange. He has a scar on his neck and he's crawling along the ground. Odd. 19 goblins. That's like nothing. Hey, wait, <laughs> why'd that goblin die? What the hell? Huh. Weird. Well, that's something. All right, it's looking like all the dwarves are in the fortress right now. So I'm gonna start locking up doors. Boy, I really should have marked these levers. I'm not sure which one does what. Um, let's see. I believe this is the one for the gates. So let's pull it. And I'm really hoping it's the one for the gates. Okay, gates are closed. Fantastic. All right, so we're safe inside for the time being. All of the gates in Zaludadil are locked up tight now, and I really hope these goblins come out and check these front gates first, just so we could try out all these log bridge traps here. Maybe kill a couple of them in the process. I'm really hoping these things work, just FYI. The goblins are moving towards the fortress very slowly, just checking the place out. Perhaps they're scared. Actually, I wouldn't doubt that at all after having to deal with the dwarves of Delirshalid. Who could blame them? They seem very disorganized. A lot of these goblins don't even have any weapons with them. And if they do, they don't know how the hell to use them. This guy's got an axe, but it says he's a wrestler. Very odd. A small group of the goblins are approaching the arena area. This is the first time goblins have laid eyes on this particular fortress. I imagine they're fairly impressed. Or terrified. Probably terrified. Okay, I have to remember, as much as I would love to kill every single one of these green-skinned bastards, I can't. I've got to let a few of them escape so I can bring news of our settlement here back to Buried Seduced and alert the other goblins. You know, rile them up a bit. Stirring up the hornet's nest, as it were. <sighs> Alright goblins, what the hell are you guys doing? You're acting pretty lame. Eh, maybe I'll open up the main gates again try to lure them in closer to the fortress. Alright, the gates are open again. So the goblins can just walk into my fortress if they so choose. But I don't think it's going to be that easy for them. You know it. Alright, this group here seems to slowly be gravitating back towards the fortress. Alright, it seems to be working. Alright, here we go. All three groups of goblins are slowly converging on the entrance of the fortress now. I'll wait for this big group of recruits to get in the midst of these three bridges right here. Working their way over. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. I don't want to wait any longer. I'm just impatient like that, I guess. And I believe it's this lever. Pull it now. The anticipation. It's insanity. The lever is pulled. Bridges are up. And here come the logs. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that didn't... I don't think that did one blessed thing, actually. Um, hmm. Well, actually, a goblin hammer man was hit in the lower body, but it was deflected by his iron breastplate. Huh, well, that's actually uh, rather pitiful. Believe it or not, I'm gonna relock these doors, and you guys are still stuck out there, so enjoy that, you bunch of bastards. Alright, you see, where I went wrong with that whole thing is I really need more logs, I think. Alright, I've got those doors locked up right now. I am going to let the goblins in through the back. Come on this way, guys. This door just opened. Come on, right back here. 
There we go, I know, it's kind of a walk, but just work your way on back there and uh, head down that long hallway, and you might be able to get right into the fortress. Maybe. Hey, where, where the hell are you going? This guy's walking up on the side of the fortress here. Get down from there, bastard goblins. It's always a fear that they know some way to get into the fortress that I have not yet seen. Really hoping that's not what they're doing. I think they're just headed up towards this entrance here, though. I badly want to send my dwarves out there and just mutilate them all. But I gotta be patient. If I can capture them in traps and then throw them in the arena, I'll still be able to mutilate them. Okay, the first of the goblins is headed down the hall. Yeah, there's no way in hell they're getting through there. And I'll tell you what, I've got a feeling uh, half of them are going to get caught in traps and then the other half is going to try to run away. So I'm going to prepare all my warriors to run out and catch the ones that are trying to flee. How about right here, down this hall. There we go. Come you brave, beautiful military dwarves. Glory awaits you. And don't bring your damn babies into battle, you foolish dwarves. I mean, does that seem like a good idea to you? Maybe half the dwarves in my military have babies in their arms? Those goblins are already trying to flee. Guess I can't blame them. All right, dwarves, we have some goblins to kill. The order is given. Now let's see if we chase these bastards down before they get away. Move out. I don't think they're gonna be able to kill any of these goblins. But even if they don't, our message is fairly clear, I'd think. Oh, oh, here's a goblin. Brave little bastard. I don't know where my dwarves are going exactly. Oh, the merchants have arrived, I don't care. Okay, I think we just killed the goblin. Or at least buried him underneath a half ton of dwarven bodies. Oh, and we still have a goblin up on the roof here, little bastard. Oh, we have one over here chasing down the outpost liaison. No, we can't lose him. I'm gonna send half my squads after this one goblin, and the other half will go up on the roof to kill this bowman. Let's go! Oh, I think someone knocked the bowman down. <laughs> and he's engulfed and, I think, dead. Oh no, the outpost liaison is running. Run, you bastard! I'll actually be pretty unhappy if this outpost liaison dies. What the hell's his name, by the way? Tossid. Run, Tossid! Oh, did he just get hit? Help! Save me! I've been injured badly! I feel hopeless! He ripped the iron bolt out of his leg. Come on, dwarves, where the hell are you? Oh, it's not looking good. Oh, yeah, dude's a goner. I'm surprised he's still alive, honestly. His right kidney is broken. His guts is broken. Dwarves are moving in at the goblin now, although it's far too late, I believe. Here come the dwarves, fighting with the goblin. The goblin has perished. Tasa the outpost liaison is still alive. Hang in there, buddy. Ah, he has died. That's a shame. I'm pretty sure this guy's been the outpost liaison since the very beginning of Delarishland. Dude had five bolts stuck in his body at the end, and he did pull out one earlier. And those are the ones that just stuck into him. You gotta give it to him. Fought like a dwarf. Or, ran like a dwarf, I suppose. Oh, I just feel bad for Moosebane now. They both had tangled teeth. That was so cute, though. Oh well, life moves on, I suppose. Well, really, all things considered, for our very first siege, I went over pretty well. Although I can't imagine the mountain homes are going to be too happy about losing such a long-time outpost liaison like Tossed here. Oh well, let's see if I can make up for it by giving them a little extra in trade. Open up the gates once more, and let's do some business. Well, it's really a shame that the whole log trap thing didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. I find it strange that only that one goblin got hit and it was deflected. I would have thought a lot more of those goblins would have got hit by these things. Well, you know, I guess I could try it again, uh, except use more logs. As I've said before, we have plenty of them here. I just really want it to work. Ah, right, I guess I should do a little overview of that invasion there. None of the military dwarves were even injured in that fighting, like not even slightly. On top of that, uh, I'm not too sure how many goblins escaped from it. Dead goblins, we have one, two, three, four, five dead goblins, and then one, two, three, four, ten captured goblins. So four goblins managed to escape. Perfect. They'll scurry their little green asses back to Buried Seduce, bring news of our powerful new fortress to their damn demon king, and then next time, we'll see even more goblins, hopefully. Alright, so we do have 10 goblin prisoners now, who, uh, let's see if I could find them. Right here, up on these walkways, getting rained on. Actually, I haven't finished the tower, but that's kind of nice to have them be rained on in here. Sucks for them, right? I like it. Well, seeing as how we have this many goblins captured now, I suppose we should start working on that walkway so I can drop them into the arena for glorious public execution. <laughs> this game, I'll tell ya. And so if we're gonna drop them in, we're gonna have to make a platform up above this somewhere. Do do do. there's, hmm, doesn't quite line up with the prison at all. So we're gonna need some sort of a solution to that. And boom, got it. We're gonna start building another tower right in this vicinity right here. We're gonna have a little walkway leading out from the top of the prison to this tower, and then another walkway that leads down to the arena. So we're gonna do some trading with those merchants, start working on this tower here, and I'll get right back to you. 
Oh, and also I guess I gotta work on that tunnel for the warriors to get into the arena and the tomb as well. I better get to it. I'll be right back. Ah, Doran Kegathakut has begun a mysterious construction. I had forgotten about this child for quite some time and then I couldn't figure out what the hell he needed. I was sure he was gonna go insane. Doran Kegathakut, the dwarven child, has created Adaglun, a Gabro amulet. Ooh, let's take a look. The Soaked Cloud. Okay. A Gabbro amulet encircled with bands of round Gabbro cabicons and pigtail. It is adorned with hanging rings of Gabbro and menaces with spikes of Gabbro and iron. On the item is an image of dwarves in pear wood. Uh, the dwarves are founding a fortress known as Dyke Knowledge in the year 2. On the item is an image of past play, the sliver of day, the slate thrown in pigtail. That's an artifact that I believe we created in Delairshalid. And just to finish it off, on the item is an image of floating guts in mongoose leather. Floating guts, I, I believe, is some sort of a creature that can be found deep in the earth. Fairly strange. Well, not bad, I suppose. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Throw it in the pile and get back to work! Alright, YouTube, some time has passed and I've been hard at work here in the fortress. The prison gets higher and higher every moment. And we're fast approaching the point where we're gonna have to just stop it because we're almost at the top of the map. It's gonna end up being 16 levels tall. Rather, that's how high the top level is going to be. I'm not sure how high the roof of it's gonna be. But I figure I gotta finish building this prison tower if I'm gonna build that walkway up over the arena. If we look over here and down a ways, I have some struts being built to support the walkway. I realize we don't need them, but it's kind of silly just to have a wooden walkway out over nothing. It's gotta be supported underneath. We're not crazy. And I do have a few sets of these struts here to keep the walkway in place. Also, I do have a small tower leading up out of the Hungry Axe. I figured I'd make it just tall enough so that people could go up there and just watch the goblins being walked out over the arena and thrown off. It's going to end up being right next to this walkway here. And that's getting there. Oh, and it looks like we just finished all of our steel shields. So now the entire military is outfitted with steel spears and shields. And now they just need all the rest of their armor. Not that we'll even need full sets of armor if the goblins keep sending wimpy attack forces like that last one. You know, I've been thinking, when we embarked here, it said we were at war with the goblins. Which is not usually the case when you first embark somewhere. Usually you're engaged in just kind of a minor conflict. So I looked online and it said if you are in a full-blown war with the goblins when you first embark, the goblins will attack sooner and in greater numbers. That does not seem to be the case here in Zaludadil. It took them a couple years to send that first pitiful attack force. I'm really hoping they up their game for the next attack. I'm sure they will. They better anyways, we're getting stronger by the day. Now is their chance. Plus we could use some more arena victims. Uh, our arena's looking pretty good as well. It is winter so the water is frozen now. If you look over here, you can see the little cabin that the warriors will emerge from. It's now completed. A simple slanted roof with a little fortification in there. Just kind of like a window. And up here you can see this kind of suspended walkway that I had made. I figured I'd throw an obstacle in there. Give our fighters something to play around with. I might put some more of that sort of stuff in there too. I was also toying with the idea of throwing traps in the arena as well, but I don't want those goblins dying too quickly. I mean, they're already getting thrown 15 Z levels down into the arena. Down here, you can see our tomb. Kind of a mess at the moment, I agree. But up here, you can kind of see the raised platforms where all the coffins or slabs will be. And down below is where I'm going to start putting water. I think that's going to end up looking pretty cool when it's done. But it's got a ways to go. Oh, also, before I forget, last episode, these Osprey people had laid a couple eggs in this nest box here. Nothing ended up coming of that, and so it became a nifty new food source. And thank you very much, Osprey people. Actually, to be honest, I haven't seen the dwarves eat any of the eggs yet. I'm not sure what they've been doing with them. Hold back, Alice Hodel, the Cog's Dwarf, is taken by a fey mood. Let me guess. Mechanisms, right? Go figure. Obak Alicidel, the Cog's Dwarf, has created Sherikidath, a chalk mechanisms. Let's take a look. Perplex amuses. Chalk mechanisms encrusted with cushion chalk cabicons. This object menaces with spikes of chalk. On the item is an image of sensed clothes, the contingent eye, the willow grate in chalk. Wow. Um, chalky. Uh, well, at least, at least it's fairly unique, I guess. Now throw it in the pile and get back to work. I don't usually make instruments in this game. How about I make a couple of those for our tavern? The Hungry Axe. I mean, how cool would it be to have our dwarven band playing some weird instruments while the arena is in full swing? I was originally going to make a bunch of Mastods in remembrance of Tassid, our outpost liaison. If you remember, he's the one who lost his Mastod at Delairshalid back in the day. But there are a few other ones on this list that look really cool. So I think I'm going to make a couple of those and get them set up in the Hungry Axe. Wish me luck. Oh my god, YouTube. Like, actually? 
Well, I would love to know why the leader of my military put down his artifact axe long enough for Ikea to fly away with the thing. I mean, are you for real, Rovod? That actually just happened. Oh my god, YouTube. Rovod, what the hell, man? Dude, I'm, I'm so livid over this. I mean, really though, Rovod. Rovod, from this day forward, you'll be known as Butterfingers. Which, yes, is a totally lame nickname, but that's exactly what you get. You loser. You could have been like the Goblin Cleaver, Troll Bane. No, you get Butterfingers. God damn it, YouTube. Ridiculous. Oh well. Hey now, YouTube, would you look at that? We just finished up our tomb. And that is looking sharp, huh? Enough room for 160 dwarves. Should last us a while, I think. And actually, if you take a look down here, you can see underneath we've removed every single piece of stone in here. So now it's nice and spacious. We also carved out the area beneath each of those platforms. Now the next step is to fill it with water, which I think is gonna be totally badass. And I actually just finished up making 100 wooden buckets for this occasion. Fancy that. I actually really love it when a big old train of dwarves gets to work like this. Really bolsters the dwarven spirit. You know, this whole process is actually going a lot faster than I thought it would. More than halfway filled at this point. And you can see we even got a bunch of the coffins in place. Looking good, dwarves. And if you take a little look up here, you can see the walkway from the prison is now completed and looking quite dapper, if I say so myself. This walkway, you can see up at the end there, I put a bunch of fortifications along the edges. Just because when goblins get thrown off into a pit, sometimes they turn around real quick and attack the dwarf that threw them, and then the dwarf will dodge, and I don't particularly want any of them going flying off the sides. And you can see I have extended these posts on the sides of the walkway up just a little bit, and I'm actually preparing some Monarch Butterfly Men statues to put up there as we speak. We're almost done with this little viewing station here. Just a couple more touches on that. And, uh, and yeah. I think after we get that tomb area filled up with water, we're gonna start throwing goblins off the end of this walkway. Our first arena challenge is about to begin, dwarves. Prepare for glory. Hey, a uh, side note here, YouTube. All of the Osprey people are now described as being corpulent, <laughs> which I find fairly amusing. Oh, and for all you people out there who say I'm mistreating the Osprey people, here we are. Proof that they actually love it here. I slept in a bedroom. This could be bliss. See? He feels blissful. He has a bedroom. I knew he'd like it. You're welcome, feathered friend. Well, there you have it, YouTube. One fourth of our nice new tomb area is now completely finished. All filled up with water down there, and I think that looks totally badass. And we're already starting to put a dent in our ghost problem. Uh, that being said, a couple of the carcasses are still inaccessible. And on top of that, I'm not gonna put any of the Osprey people corpses down here. This is kind of a, a strictly dwarven area. I'll find a better place for them. Oh my goodness, YouTube, I just realized it's midsummer. You know what that means? It's time for the summer hunt of 1039. I am so excited for this, YouTube. Well, clearly the dwarves are excited as well. I think every dwarf is in the hungry axe as we speak. They're all amped up, they're ready to go, they know the show's about to start, and so it shall. Now, my biggest concern about this whole arena thing is that the goblins are just gonna book it over to one of the walls of the arena and try to climb out. So I think I'm gonna put some security guards outside the arena just so we don't have any escapees. And another thought here, YouTube, I'm not gonna throw all of my warriors down in the arena because these goblins are being thrown quite some distance down there and they're gonna be fairly injured straight off the bat. If I put all my warriors in there, they're just gonna rip through the goblins. Well, let's see, the Pinebeards fought in the arena last year. I don't want them hogging all the glory. So in true nerd fashion, I will roll a dice to see which squad will be performing this year. The Mad Cones. Very cool. Now then, is everyone ready for a show? I do hope so. Okay, first things first, I'm going to station the Mad Cones down in this little waiting area here. You can see I built a nice little area for my dwarves to just kind of hang out while the arena is being prepared for them. They should be assembling shortly. Good to see the dwarves just felt like leaving all their buckets all over the damn place after they were done filling up the tombs, by the way. And while the mad cones are assembling, I will set up a couple of pit areas right here, and I will select some unfortunate goblins to be thrown into the arena. All ten of them. There we go. Now, if done correctly, dwarves should be going out and grabbing those goblins and dragging them down the walkway to their death. Ah, here they come. Oh, and I can't forget to station some security officers outside the walls of the arena. Picture the excitement these dwarves must feel sitting in this tavern here, clacking their mugs together as the dwarven band plays. Oh god, what's, what, what's happening? Shit ass. Oh, that's not good. 
Alright, I'm not sure what happened exactly, but it looks like a couple of the goblins managed to get away from the dwarves that were dragging them to the arena. Not fantastic. This one here is the wrestler with the axe. He's currently trying his damnedest to kill Minkot the Untroubled, who's holding her baby. Alright, I remember this whole pit thing being a little finicky in the past. Tell you what, I'm gonna stop throwing any goblins in here. Now, unfortunately, all of my squads are so far away, it's gonna be hard for them to get to the prison in time. But actually, the rabid possums are the only ones who are not currently assigned. Get up there, possums! Damn it, Minkot's not looking good. Come on, Minkot, go! God damn it! Ugh, oh, they killed Untroubled. Now it's just her poor baby. Go, little babe. Go, get out of there. All right, looks like a warrior dwarf is there now. A couple of the goblins are dead. Quick look around, that may have been all of them. Yeah, I think that was all of them. Ugh, you rat bastards. That damn goblin was really trying to get that baby. Four times the baby managed to squirm away. I'll tell you what, babe, you get a nickname. From this day forward, you shall be known as Slick. Just because she was able to squirm away from the goblin that many times without getting injured. Alright, well obviously in the future we're gonna have to be a little bit more careful with throwing goblins off the walkway. Alright, uh, take two. And this time we're gonna do just one goblin. One single goblin, nice and safe. Oh good, this is this is going well. This is exactly what I expected. Alright YouTube, so Mallard is dead, one of my starting seven dwarves. You may remember that Minkot the Untroubled just died uh, within the past, what was that, a minute? Another of my starting seven dwarves. Great, good, good. Fantastic. Be aware that I have almost 200 dwarves at this point, so what the hell are the chances that two of my seven starting dwarves are gonna go up here and get killed by goblins? That's gotta be a pretty low chance right there, huh? I basically got lucky. All right, YouTube. I'll tell you what, we only have a couple of goblins left, so even if we did throw them in the arena, it's not gonna be much of a fight. That totally sucks ass. I really wish there was something we could do in the arena. Something at least mildly epic. Well, howdy, partners, and welcome to the Great Badger Rodeo of 1039. It's gonna be a regular knockdown dragout, I reckon. Alright, so, YouTube, I'm gonna level with you. We don't really have much to throw into the arena, but I did manage to get my hands on a bunch of badgers, and, uh, yeah, you can see them just kinda sitting down here in little cages. So, y'all don't fly off the handle. I'm fixing to give you a show yet, boy howdy. I'll reckon that those badgers are as nervous as some long-tailed cats in a room full of rocking chairs. The mad cones are waiting down in the tunnels, and they're set and fixed to come on up here and catch them some varmints, I reckon. Yeehaw! Let's get this lever pulled, and now the rule is whoever kills the most badgers gets a shiny new nickname. Good luck, partners! And they're off! Look at them little varmints go! And here come the mad cones, those good old boys, and they appear to be raring to go. Already the badgers are bleeding like a bunch of stuck pigs, I reckon. Y'all. Yeehaw! It's looking like all those little doggies are dead. Alright, that's enough of the whole country thing. Alright now, let's take a look here to see who killed the most badgers. Uh, you got one. You got one. You got one. You got two. If I cut trade scorches. Well fantastic, looks like you win, dude. A shiny new nickname. And we're gonna call you Wrangler, because you were able to lasso yourself some little varmints. Good work. And I really hope we have something better to throw in here next time. Because that was really kind of a letdown. Sorry dudes, but sometimes you just gotta make lemonade out of lemons, I suppose. Well, that was an episode, huh? Did some more building, which is always nice. And now we have ourselves a snazzy new walkway leading from the prison to the arena which is seemingly useless at this point. Now that I'm thinking about it though, I remember in the past having problems with dragging prisoners to a pit area, and I looked up the proper way to do it, and this is certainly not it. Very dangerous. But I'm gonna have to test some things out, I think. The way that I used to do it back in the day was to make a bunch of holes in a big floor, and then arrange the cages around it. And then when you have somebody throw a goblin into a pit, they just take them out of the cage and throw them directly into the pit without having to drag them anywhere, it's a lot safer. But if I made an area like that above the arena here, it would completely destroy any purpose of having a big, nice prison tower like we do have here in Zaludadil. So I'm gonna have to find a workaround. A happy medium, if you will. And you know, I think I have just the thing, but we'll try that out next episode. Over here we have our nice new observation tower leading down to the Hungry Axe Tavern. Which is a hoppin', by the way. I imagine they're all embroiled in conversation about how lame the Badger Rodeo was. If that is the case, they can all go screw themselves. Because I think it was pretty cool. And last but not least, we carved out our nice new 
tomb area here and finished up a fourth of it. We'll have to continue that in the future. I probably won't show you it again until it's done. And that's going to be amazing, YouTube. You know it. The thing I think I'm most excited about this episode though, was the fact that we got attacked by goblins. It was like a weak little scouting expedition, but who cares? They know we're here now, they're going to be coming in force next time, hopefully. You remember those sieges that came after Delishlid. The goblins came in droves. They brought with them hundreds of beak dogs and trolls. It's only a matter of time before Zaludadil faces those same threats. We're going to have to remain vigilant, we can have fun now. But at some point things are going to get deadly, and I've got a feeling that's going to be very soon. Oh, and one last thing YouTube, at the beginning of this series I had said that this particular fortress is only going to last 4 or 5 episodes, and we're basically there. So you guys let me know what you think. Is this just the start of Zaludadil, or is it the end? One thing's for sure though, I don't particularly want to start a new series in a brand new world quite yet. A new update for Dwarf Fortress has got to be right around the corner, perhaps in the next couple months anyways. I don't want to start up a brand new world with all kinds of crazy shit in there and then have that update come out, cause I'm gonna switch over to that update like immediately. Well maybe not immediately, I'm gonna let all the bugs get worked out first, but you know what I mean. So yeah, let me know what you think YouTube. Should I stick with Zaludadil here? Should we keep fleshing it out, give it as much character as possible? Or should we start a new fortress somewhere in this realm? Well, as always, YouTube, I really appreciate you watching. Truly, I mean that. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I really hope you'll join me next time here in Zaludadil, Future Lanterns. And until then, YouTube.